Hey YouTubers, good morning, Rob Moffitt. Guys, we've got a good video this morning. We're going to talk about Scott Adams and his book, Reframe Your Brain. Now, I'm a big fan of Scott. I've read a lot of his books over the years. Uh, stick to drawing monkey, uh, drawings, monkey brain, <laughs> Wing Bigly. And one of my favorites, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big. I've given this book to people in my family and friends. So it's that good. There's a lot of interesting things. I always tell myself, if you read a book and you get just one good idea, at least one good idea, it was worth the time that you spent. And I got a lot of good ideas out of Scott's book. Now, we're going to be talking about his latest book, Reframe Your Brain. This book is about how to change your way of thinking from uh, something that's happening in your life that's negative and turning into a positive. He's got over 160 different reframes that he's come up with. He starts off the book... Let's go quickly over the, the, the contents. It's uh, how to reprogram your brain. Then he different categories of reframing it for success, mental health, social life, physical health, reality frames. And then the, number eight, how to make your own reframes. This is one of the more important chapters in the book because you may have something that he doesn't cover. So you can have a way of rewiring and reframing your brain using your own uh, inputs. The last chapter, nine, is he goes over all of the reframes without going into detail. So you can just go through them quickly. He also does something in this book that I don't think that uh, he spends enough time on, or I think it's more important than, than some of the other things that's in the book. He talks about how you can have imaginary mentors. He doesn't use that phrase, but that's what I, I'm thinking of when he t t spoke about it. You can come up with, um, let's say you're having a problem and you have a lot of confidence in your life. If you imagine somebody who has the most confidence that you admire and that you would know how they would respond if you talk to them or ask them a question or something. So you let's say you have several problems in your life. So just think of a person for each one of those categories that you're weak on and you want to change or find a problem or solution for, then you imagine having a meeting with them and you ask them questions and they respond because you kind of know how they would respond. But now you're not being schizophrenic <laughs> and you, you, you probably don't want to tell your friends you're doing this. I, I've been doing it for years, but I never told anybody. But when I saw that Scott talked about it, I thought maybe I should mention it too. It is something that I think is helpful that nobody ever talks about. You, you can come up with a, a, a team or a, a group of mentors that you can ask questions about or just have input on things that are going on in your life and you can get the response from them. Of course, you're not really getting a response from them. You're just like you're finding out what you really think about it. What's the really answer based upon what your knowledge and your experience and so on. You're, you're not channeling anybody or anything. You're not talking to Napoleon. <laughs> you're not, <laughs> you know, so you, you're just like you're in a car and it's dark and you turn on the lights and now you can see. So the, 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 the road was always there, but now you turn on the lights, now you can see it. So when you have these mentors that you're, you're, you're asking questions, you can get responses that you already know the answer to, but you weren't able to see. And I don't think it's something that anybody ever talks about. I first read about it in a book that I think was over 100 years old, and I started doing it. I don't do it all the time. In fact, it's very, very infrequent. But when I do do it, I often get uh, surprisingly good uh, answers and uh, ideas for moving forward in different areas where I need to improve. So um, that's something he mentioned in the book. I don't think anybody... Um, has talked about or he has really uh, focused on very much. We need to we need to start talking about the book, don't we? Um, the very first part of the book, he gives a reframe. And this really hit home to me because he talks about walking the dog reframe, how he was kind of annoyed walking the dog. And he read one day that somebody wrote scientifically, because all the reframes, whenever he has a scientific uh, uh, reason for it, he gives the scientific uh, background of why it would work. If not, he just gives subjective reasons why he thinks it would work. But anyway, the dog walking reframe, there was a science study indicating that when dogs go for a walk and they stop and sniff something, 
That's very important to them. They've studied the dog's brain and it's really going crazy when they're sniffing stuff and they can actually get tired from sniffing stuff. They're using that much energy. And they, they say it's sort of like dogs when they go around sniffing stuff when they go for a walk, it's like social media for them. They're on Facebook or <laughs> they're, 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 they're communicating and getting information from other dogs and so on. And when I would walk my dog, my mom passed away and I got a dog from her. I inherited Cookie, wonderful dog, but I wasn't allowed to keep a dog here. So I would walk her at night and early in the morning when nobody was around for over 10 years, every year, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, walk the dog twice a day. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes it was very annoying. Maybe it was cold or raining or just I was tired and, or she was just spending too much time sniffing stuff and I would get aggravated. If I had known about this reframe that the dog was really busy doing something very important to the dog, I would have not gotten upset at all. And, and Scott mentions how he reframed his way of thinking when he was walking the dog. Not only would he not get annoyed, he would start finding ways to use that time while the dog was sniffing and using social media <laughs> to 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 uh, maybe practice his breathing or his posture or, or do different things. So there's ways to reframe a bad situation into something that's positive. I remember one day I was at a post office on Miami Beach. I would go there once a week and it was annoying because the line was super long and people were just aggravated. And I, I noticed up at the top of, of the wall, there was light coming into windows near the ceiling and it was like shafts of light coming in and a bunch of dust motes in the air. And it was cinematic. And I started thinking about how old that post office was. It was from the 1930s or 40s. And I thought about all the people that had been there. And then I started imagining, what if this was like 1940 when I was in there right then? I was thinking, what would people be doing when they left? What would be the traffic like outside? What would be the topics of things people would be concerned about? What would be they having for dinner? You know, <laughs> what, what? there'd be no air conditioning in, in my apartment when I went home. You know, like it was just like I started thinking about what if I was in 1940 when that post office first opened and uh, I was just looking around at the people and so on. And it just I felt like out of time. And it just, it, it really, at the same time, it, it focused me in a, in a way that uh, I was no longer upset. And every time I'd go to the post office, I would get into that frame of mind. And it was actually a pleasant uh, experience. So there's so many ways you can, ref another reframe, I remember one time, someone told me that y you don't have to do something, you, you get to do it. Like, I remember when I was taking care of my mom, and she had Alzheimer's. It was the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. And um, I remember one day, I a little voice in my head said, you don't have to do this, you get to do it. And it just flipped the way I thought about um, caring for my mom and so on. And I, I, I don't get me wrong, I was not in that frame of mind all the time and I wasn't able to do it all the time. Oftentimes it was extremely, um, uh, it was a very challenging experience and you I wasn't always able to to flip the the reframe but but sometimes I was and it was very helpful so he starts off with very common simple reframes that he's used over the years and like I said they're they're divided up into uh, like the workplace or if you want success like our uh, uh, relationships, different things that uh, you can try. And at the very end, he uh, goes into, uh, he reviews the 160 that he had already come up with through the book, through the book. But he starts off how to reprogram your brain, how to, how to use the reframes. And then at, like I said, chapter eight, um, he actually goes into detail about how to uh, reframe He uses stories um, and like science uh, studies and personal experience. So it's it's a, it's a very easy book to read. And here's at the end how to make your own reframes. 
and then at the very end he just gives the reframes he doesn't go into detail like he does in the first part of the book it's just like a recap so you're you're going to find more than at least one good idea i think you're going to find a lot of good ideas and he's got a lot of feedback from people over the years about reframes he's talked about on his podcast uh, like some people have been able to give up alcohol not they weren't addicted but they were just like social drinkers or they'd have one a day or whatever and they realized they didn't want to do it anymore and he came up with a frame reframe and people were using it and he got a lot of feedback you're not going to have success 100 percent with these reframes with everybody and, but if, if you can only help five percent of the people <laughs> you know you, you're or ten percent of the people that is fantastic by just simple reframes and like i said if one doesn't work, you can use his tactics to come up with something to reframe. Um, I I think this is going to be one of his more popular books. And it's going to be one of the more helpful ones that he's done. Um, so, mental health reframes. I am my inner thoughts. Reframe. I am what I do. <laughs> so it's not what you're thinking about. It's what you actually do through the day. Um, some people are good and some are not we're all flawed and we're all good at different things so <laughs> criticism feels like a dagger to your heart criticism is a chemical reaction in the skull of someone who isn't in the room <laughs> that's one of my favorites so, guys, um, I think you might be interested in Scott's book, Reframing. It's available on Amazon. You can get it off your Kindle. and But more importantly, you can also get it at the library. You won't have to pay anything. I'll leave a link anyway. So, check out Scott's book, Reframing Your Brain, and see what you think. And try that mentor thing I was talking about. A little, a, little, uh, a group of people that you can have that will help you come up with with uh, solutions to things in your life. However, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I really highly recommend. I mean, it's too late for me. <laughs> but, but yeah, I wouldn't tell anybody that's what you were doing. And uh, and if they start talking to you when, when you didn't ask them to, to, to talk, you might want to get help. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's going to be one of his more popular books. Guys, hope you like this this book review for Scott Adams and check out some of his other stuff. He also has a podcast every day on YouTube. You might want to check out. All right, guys, take care. See you out there.